seven simple secrets of a secret place or what to do in prayer. You know, prayer is very important to a Christian. Jesus taught about prayer. He practiced prayer. He's our intercessor. He prays for us and we are called to pray. But so many people are confused on what to do during prayer how to pray and as well as how to experience God's presence in prayer. I would like to tackle a few of these topics in this short video. In Matthew 7, 7 it says that seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. Knock and it will be opened to you. And that breaks down prayer to really three main components. The three types of prayer. There is the seeking which speaks of devotion, then there is the knocking which speaks of intercession and there is the asking which speaks of petition when we are asking Jesus for something. Knocking when we are interceding, praying for someone and then seeking is when we are pressing into His presence, abiding in His presence. And in this video I would like to touch on the part of seeking His presence. Now Prayer is not just about seeking His presence. Prayer is about asking, confessing our sin. Prayer is also about praying for our needs and praying for other people. But prayer is really given to us so that we can get to know God, so that we can get to know His voice and so that we can get to know His presence on a more practical and tangible way. I will give you seven of things that I see happen in my prayer life regularly. It doesn't happen every single day but I'm going to mention them that they do happen regularly. Number one is separation. I believe in something called separating to a sacred space. When you separate yourself to a prayer, to a time of prayer, when you designate a sacred space where you separate yourself physically to during prayer, it takes your prayer to another level. Now you can pray anywhere, it's true. We can pray without ceasing. You can pray in your bed, you can pray in your car, but something happens when you designate a place, a sacred place, sacred space to prayer. Now it's true that you are that sacred space to God. You're the temple of God. You're the property of the Holy Spirit. You're the real estate of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to remember in Matthew 28 verse 16 Jesus said, when the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them, when they saw Him they worshipped Him but some doubted. So this mountain Jesus appointed for them. Now Jesus could have met them anywhere. Jesus was already in His glorified body. But I want you to notice He appointed a place. He appointed a sacred space where He met them and there He appeared and there they worshipped Him. Some doubted. And so do you have a place where you meet with the Lord? It could be in the park, on the mountain, by the river, in the closet, in the basement, on the top of the roof. It could be in a local church. Do you have a place that you separate yourself to? If you don't have that place, I want to encourage you. Start with carving or making a place. Jesus many times withdrew to wilderness to pray. Now if He could have talked to His Father on His bed, why did He withdraw? Because something happens even to your emotions and to your body as you pick yourself up from your bed and you move yourself to that designated, that special place. You're almost telling God, hey, this is, this is not common. This is not for everyday use. This is for me and you. This is special. When you separate yourself to a sacred space, you're telling God, this is special to me. This is important to me and God likes that. He wants to be special. Now do you need to have that space to pray to God? No. But if you really want to take it to another level, designate sacred space and separate yourself to that space regularly. One of the things that I like to practice is also get out of town. I don't do that every day but you know regularly leave out of town, rent a hotel for a few days and that's my sacred space. Me, the Bible, worship songs and just being there with the Holy Spirit. It does something so wonderful to your soul and to your intimacy with God. The second thing that I want to encourage you with and that is to surrender the struggle and striving. A lot of times when you show up at that place what begins to happen is a lot of struggle, a lot of striving happens because you are physical, you're living in the physical world, you have emotions, there's troubles, there's the cares of life, deceitfulness of riches, there's temptations, there's, there's all of these things. I mean disciples slept during the times that Jesus prayed. That means it wasn't easy. Sometimes your flesh 
will fight you. Sometimes demons will fight you. The devil will try to send you some kind of a nightmare, some kind of a hiccup or some kind of a problem so that you don't get through to the presence of God. Now God is with you 100% but I'm talking about the manifest presence of God. So what do you do is surrender the striving. When the striving, when the distraction is there, press in and in all of that surrender it to the Lord. Give that to God. As you give Him your problems, He will give you His peace. The Bible says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. I like to compare prayer to the three parts of the Old Testament temple. The outer court, the inner court and the Holy of Holies. The outer court is when your body you know wakes up and is moved to pray. The inner court is when your soul is praying. You know, you're trying to get through the thoughts, distractions, different arguments, different doubts. That's why the Bible says some people came to the place where Jesus designated for, for meeting with Him and some doubted. There's a place of doubt that could exist. Place of fear, place of offense. All of that is normal. I called it the outer place. And then there's the Holy of Holies. It's when your spirit prays, when there's silence, when there's peace, when there's presence, when there's, there's this tranquility. There's a, it, it, it's so beautiful. It's kind of like when you're in the airplane. You know, when the airplane leaves the gate, you know, that, that speaks of like you separating yourself. And then the air, airplane takes off, you start praying. But how many of you know that first, you know, 20 minutes or 15 minutes, is, that could be a lot of turbulence. The clouds and the, it's a little bit scary, it's shaking and, and that's exactly what happens in prayer. It's, it, I call it the turbulence. When your flesh and your distractions and all kinds of doubts and fears are there, press through that, surrender through it. Get through that striving and that struggle because there's something beautiful after that. Step number three or point number three is the scripture starts to speak. See when you get through that surrender period or when you get through that striving into surrender, the scripture begins becomes alive. The scripture starts to speak. Now some people like to read the scripture to help them get through that striving. Some people begin their prayer time with scripture and that's also good. I like to start my prayer, prayer time with thanking God, confessing my sins and getting things out of my head so that my mind can be focused and then I dive into the scripture. It's most beautiful when you go from reading the scripture to the scripture reading you. And that's what happens in that secret, uh, secret space. That secret place is the scripture comes alive. The Holy Spirit who wrote the Bible begins to be present with you and He decodes, explains and He begins to reveal. Jesus many times in His glorified body met with disciples and He expounded on the scriptures. Now you would think He's God. He didn't need to talk about the Bible. He could have just talked about you know himself but he expounded the scriptures because he wants us to be grounded in the holy scriptures not in our experiences but in the holy scriptures we don't deny experiences taste and see the lord is good those things are important but the scriptures come alive the rhema comes alive where god breathes that word breathes into you that's number three so separation to a sacred space surrender through striving and then scripture speaks number four is when you get the song of the Lord or song to the Lord. It, this is one of my favorite things. Incorporate worship in your time with Jesus. Find your favorite worship song and then play that song and worship to the Lord. Why? Because something happens in a secret place. This is a time where you minister to the Lord. Many of us, we minister for God, the things that we do for God, the things that we do for other people. But in a secret place, we minister to the Lord. And one of the best ways you minister to the Lord is by singing worship. In fact, it says in Acts chapter 13 verse 2, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Paul and Barnabas and the rest of the people, they were ministering to the Lord. I love that because almost every time that I get out of town, you know, for a few days to spend time with God and I just, you know, there's a playlist of worship songs that is playing and sometimes there's that one song that begins to minister to me. And how I know it's ministering to me because at that moment it's ministering to the Lord. And I'm not talking about that I'm playing a song and I'm just browsing through Instagram. No, no, no. I am engaging with that worship song and I'm singing it to the Lord. In fact, Jesus taught us to pray. He says, pray like this, our Father, hallowed be our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. Worship is part of that secret place. Worship is part of that intimacy with God. It's one of the ways to enter it, enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. God inhabits the praises of His people. He seeks such that worship Him in spirit and in truth. If you have a difficult time connecting, experiencing intimacy. Practice worship. Number five 
is you really enter that secret place or you enter that deep relationship with God. This is one of the marks, is when Jesus becomes sweet, the sweetness of Jesus. The Word of God comes alive. The song begins to bubble up inside of your heart to the Lord. And then this is when you, when you know you've entered the Holy of Holies. When Jesus, not only He becomes more real, but He becomes sweet. He becomes more precious. His name causes tears to roll down your eyes. There's just, He becomes that precious treasure, that pearl of great price. See, for many people, we treat Jesus as common. We even say Jesus, 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 Jesus. But when you begin to experience the presence of God, Jesus becomes precious. John, John the Revelator, he was beloved by Jesus. He laid his head on the, the chest of Jesus. He knew Jesus. He spent three years with Him. Yet in book of Revelation, Jesus revealed a new facet of who He was to John. His eyes were like fire. His face was shining like the sun. His hair was white, as white as wool. His feet stood on this sea of brass. And when John saw, John saw Him, He fell dead. Now imagine John, John has been with Jesus for three and a half years. I mean John kind of knew Jesus. But now he has this revelation of the majesty. Jesus becomes more precious. Jesus becomes more glorious. It's not that He becomes. He's always been like that. But the new facet of who He is, is revealed to us. See, that's what the real goal of prayer is to have a fresh revelation of the beauty, of the majesty, of the glory of Jesus Christ. The Scripture helps us with that. The Holy Spirit helps us with that to reveal Jesus. Number six, see in this secret place, in this devotional life, when Jesus becomes more real, something happens to you. You become quiet. There comes a solitude, silence in here. Everything else dies down. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. There comes a stillness here. Before there was just noise, words. There was thoughts and, and temptations and troubles and anxiety and worry and doubt. But when Jesus becomes real, there's a quietness in your soul. There's rest in your soul. There is solitude. There is this stillness that happens there. You can't explain it. There's this, this thing where He occupies you. He fills you. You feel rest that's supernatural. You feel strength that is supernatural. The Bible says those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not get weary. There, there's this recalibration there's this restoration, renewal, resetting that takes place in your soul. Quietness, stillness, peace, this tranquility that I can't explain with words. It's so beautiful. It's so precious. And that's the benefit, the fruit of His presence. And the last step that I would encourage you to take or to do when you experience that in prayer is stay longer. Linger there in that place. Linger in that presence. A lot of times we experience that and we run. We experience that and we're like, man, I need to go to the next thing. I need to run. I have a gym to go to. I have a job to go to. And sometimes it's not possible to stop everything else in our life. But if, you can if you're in control of your schedule and you can postpone some things and cancel some things, the times that the Lord visits you like that, postpone them. Cancel the gym for that day. Honestly, cancel the other activity if you can and linger in His presence. It's the over time spent in His presence that will throw you into the overflow of life. The secret to living in overflow in ministry, the secret to living in overflow in your career is to take over time in His presence. And you might not do that every day, but there are those moments. You know those moments. I just described them to you kind of in the detail. We go from separation to striving, surrender, and then we we dive into the scripture. We give the Lord a song of our heart. We see the sweetness of Jesus. We experience this beautiful solitude and stillness in our heart. Linger there. Stay longer in that place. Whatever you need to do, stay as long as you can until that lifts because something will happen as a result of that. There will be a residue. There will be a consequence of that you will begin to notice. You will be different. You'll be like Moses, walk down and your face is shining. You will be like Jacob. After he encountered the angel of the Lord, he was limping. You will be like disciples, even the Pharisees and their enemies recognized they've been with Jesus. You will be like 
Stephen, they said, and his face was like the face of Angel. Why? Because he stayed too long. He lingered. He took overtime in the presence of God. God's presence is the key to longevity, fulfillment and meaning in life. Ministry to the Lord launches you into ministry from the Lord. A lot of us are ministering for God. We're serving God, but God wants you to start serving Him directly through worship and spending time with Him. I hope this was a blessing to you and I hope that it whetened your appetite to spend time with Jesus. I want to encourage you to begin to take time to be with the Lord. I want to create a hunger in you for God. Not for me, not for my YouTube channel, for God. If this was a blessing to you, let me know below what some of your practices that you do to experience the presence of God in your life. With some books or maybe some things that you do, places that you pray at that help you to experience His presence or resources. Also, don't forget to smash the thumbs up for this video. Subscribe if you have not and turn on the bell so that you can be notified each time we upload or when we go live. God bless you and until next time.